Now we are going to YouTube live. Greetings. We are continuing today on the subject of leadership. And we are examining the qualities of a leader in the life of Nehemiah. We examined uh, that in the last lessons that Nehemiah was a man of prayer. And we looked at the importance of prayer and different types of prayer. We saw that before making any major decision, Nehemiah prayed. When he heard about the knee, a great need in Jerusalem, he prayed and fasted. When the king asked him what was his request, he prayed and then he gave the answer. When his life was threatened, he prayed and he continued to work. Number two, we see that he was a man of courage. When uh, Nehemiah began to rebuild the walls and the gates of Jerusalem, there were people that were very upset with him and wanted to kill him and stop the work. And some suggested that he should hide in the temple because no one would touch him in the temple. But in uh, chapter 6, verse 11, Nehemiah says, Should such a man as I flee? And who is there such as I who would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. <laughs> Nehemiah refused to hide and flee from problems. And in the face of great opposition, he kept moving forward with the job. You too will face opposition when you begin to do God's work. Not everybody is going to clap for you because you are doing God's will. Some people will criticize you. Some people will try to hurt you. In English, we have a saying, nobody kicks a dead dog. Nobody kicks a dead dog. 
Why? Because he's dead. <laughs> well, we shouldn't, we should not be kicking dogs. Uh, so, uh, but the, the point here is that if you begin to do something for the Lord, someone is going to come against you and criticize you or try to kick you. But as Nehemiah, you pray and you keep at the job, you keep moving forward, you press on. You stay focused on the job and don't get distracted by those oppositions. Number three, we see that Nehemiah was concerned about the well-being, the welfare of the people. In chapter, in chapter 1, verse 6, we read, Please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night, for the children of Israel, your servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against you, both my father's house and I have sinned. Again, in chapter 2, verse 10. When Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite official heard of it, they were deeply disturbed that a man had come to see the well-being of the children of Israel. So it's, it is it is very clear that Nehemiah was concerned about the well-being of the children of Israel. And in the passage that we read before, you may have noticed he did not say they sent but I'm okay. He said, we have sinned. He included himself with the people. He was confessing the sins of Israel, and he included himself, even though perhaps he did not have anything to do with it, but he identified with the people. Number four, Nehemiah had a healthy realism. He was practical. Let's Chapter 4, verse 9. It says, Nevertheless, we made our prayer to God, and because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. 
Բայց մենք մեր արսունավոր կարենք եւ մեր ցանցից պաշտպանելու համար ծերեք ու գիշերը պահապաններ ձեզնին։ We see this uh, as very important what he did is he set up an early warning system. You see when he he set up some people to watch while others were working. And when he did this the threat of violence went away. We see that in uh, in the case of Nehemiah, he was very practical. <clears throat> Number uh, under this uh, subtopic of healthy realism or pra- being practical. We see. Uh, we need to add the fact that he had a balance between the spiritual and the practical. You see, uh, we can become so. Sp- spiritual sometimes that we are not practical. We must have a healthy balance and not to fall into extremes in one direction or the other. You see, Nehemiah prayed but he also put guards, people to guard on the walls. So he he not only prayed, but he did something about that. He had a balance. You know, I have flown on many different types of airplanes. Yes, I'm waiting. But I have never flown on an airplane with only one wing. (laughs) Why? Because it would not fly. An airplane needs to have balance in order to be able to fly. Some years ago, a a cargo airplane fell not far from where I live. Some years ago, a cargo airplane fell not far from where I live. The pilots were killed and the airplane was completely destroyed. What happened? The pilots were very experienced, good pilots. But they were carrying cargo in this airplane, and the cargo was not secured properly, and it shifted in the airplane. When the cargo shifted, the airplane lost its balance. Because all of the weight went into one place. And no matter how experienced the pilots were, they were not able to uh, to survive the situation. 
Balance is very important in the life of a leader. And uh, when it comes to biblical teaching, we must have balance in our teaching. If you want to know God's will or what God's word says about a specific subject, you need to find every scripture that deals with that subject to get the full picture. Otherwise, you will be like those blind people who were asked to describe an elephant. They went and felt the airplane, I mean, the, um, uh, the elephant, and one said, he is a big ear. Another one found the trunk, and he says, the elephant is a big trunk. One found the tusk and said, oh, uh, it's a big tusk. Another one found the leg. He says, a big, big leg. So they were all correct and they were all wrong. <laughs> they were correct only in part. Because, because the elephant is all of that. So when you study God's word about a specific subject, take every passage that deals with that subject and you will have a balanced view of the will of God. Um, we see some of the practical ways that Nehemiah built up the faith of in the people. In the chapter 2, verse 20, he says, So I answered them and said to them, The God of heaven himself will prosper us. Therefore, we his servants will arise and build, but you have no heritage or right or memorial in Jerusalem. So you see that he always um, encouraged people to believe and trust that God will help them to get the job done. In chapter 4, verse 14, it says, And I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people, Do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your children, for your sons, for your daughters, for your wives, and your houses. Mm -hmm. 
In chapter 4, verse 20, he said, Whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there, our God will fight for us. So, and again, we will not read this one, but write down Nehemiah 8. 10, one more passage dealing with the practicality. Okay, pause again, right? Nehemiah 810. We, we will not read it, but just write it down. When, when you act in faith, when you as a leader demonstrate faith, that faith will encourage faith in the, uh, the people you are leading. You see, when the people saw that Nehemiah did not go and hide when he was threatened, they were encouraged to also be bold and move forward. Now, we do not do foolish things, but sometimes God will lead us to step out in faith and do something that looks impossible. Uh, we were conducting a large evangelistic campaign in Brazil together with my friend Tony Abram. And about 30, 35,000 people were coming each night to the open uh, football field to hear the gospel. But this day, it had rained very hard, and so the field was very wet and muddy, and we had less people, maybe 10, 12,000 people. And just as the meeting began, and one of the Brazilian pastors was uh, leading in singing, that raindrops began to fall. And people began to look for uh, a place to hide. Some had an umbrella, they put it up, some looked for trees to hide. I asked for the microphone and I asked the people to please stop where they were. Yes, and I reminded the people of the many miracles that we had seen God do in those meetings. And I said, Let, how many of you believe we can pray and the rain will stop? And of course, many of these were new believers, and so they said, Amen. And so we stopped and we prayed. But it was still drizzling. 
But I said, okay, now you must, we must put our faith into action. And I took off my raincoat and I asked the people to pull down their umbrellas. And the rain stopped. And it did not rain until the meeting was finished and the people went home. Now, what happened that evening is that about 6,000 people received Jesus Christ as their Savior. And approximately 1,200 people indicated that they were healed by the power of God. We heard perhaps 200 testimonies of healing. You see, faith begets faith. Faith produces faith. When you move in faith, it encourages faith in other people. You see, I knew in my heart that God's will was for those people to hear the gospel. And I felt of the whole uh, by the uh, led of the Holy Spirit to pray that way for the rain to stop. And when the rain stopped, this gave faith to the people to believe for healing and for salvation. So uh, we see that Nehemiah, when he acted in faith, that encouraged the people to do the same. Okay, uh, Nehemiah dealt promptly with potential causes of problems and confusion. We see, we see that he dealt with the problem quickly before it became a big problem. Let's look at uh, chapter 4, starting with verse 10. Then Judah said, the strength of the laborers is failing, and there's so much rubbish that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversary said they will neither know nor see anything till we come into their midst and kill them and cause the work cause the work to cease. So it was when the Jews who dwelt near them came that they told us ten times, from whatever place you turn, they will come upon us. Therefore, I positioned men behind the lower parts of the wall at the openings. I set the people according to their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and I rose and I said to the nobles, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, your houses. And it happened when our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had brought their plot to nothing, that all of us returned to the wall, everyone to his work. So it was that from that time on, that half of my servants work at construction, while the other half held the spears, the shields, the bows, and wore armor, and the leaders were behind all the house of Judah." Հուդան ասա, 
Բերմակիների ուրը հատավ, որը շատ է, մենք չենք կարող անապարից հշինել, ու մեր պշնամիներ ասում են, որ չի մանան չտեսնեն, մինչեր նրանց մեջ մտնենք և նրանց մերցնենք, և նրանց գորձը խապանենք, բայց նրանց � Եվ իրեն սրերով, միզակներով և ավերներով կամնեցրեցին։ Նա եցին ու երա, եվ իշխանների, եվ ուսիկաների ու մնացան ժողումթին ասացին։ Նրան դիրեցից մի վապեցեք, իշեք տիրոչը, որ մեզ եվ ահեր է, եվ ձեր Այնորին տիվեր իմ ամկանց կեսը աշատում էի, կեսնեն իծակներ, ասպարներ, ավերներ և զրահաններ են պրնով, ու իշխանները ուտայի մորով ադկատորների ետերը կամինած էի։ Բարից պրշինորներն ու բերակիները So we see that Nehemiah directed to people's thoughts to God. Always God is with us. God will help us. He made sure the people were properly armed, that they had the tools and the weapons for protection. Նա այնպես առեզ, որ ժողորութը պատշարջ կերկով զինվատ լիներ և կաղան այն պաշտանվեր։ He regrouped them and placed them in strategic places. Ինքը դերախն բավորեր մատկան դիեր կարնեցեր ծենք կարևորը ավազնավանական կետերում։ He put families to work closer to their homes, to their houses. You see, the people will always build a stronger wall next to their house because it involves their protection. He ordered half of them to work while half of them were, uh, were resting or guarding. And, and we see as we read through Nehemiah that he had worship celebrations once they completed a certain amount of work. He reinstituted the Feast of Tabernacles. The other thing we notice about Nehemiah is that he avoided polarization. In other words, people, some people pulling one direction, others in another direction. He kept in focus, moving in one direction. And this is very important because uh, if people get polarized, there's one side and there's another side in a church, uh, maybe two sides, maybe three sides, they start pulling in different directions. What happens is the devil wins, not God's work. <laughs> There has to be one direction for the people to move forward. Soldiers do not march in different directions. They march holding rank. Number five, Nehemiah had foresight and insight. 
հերատեսություն եր խորա ապանքություն։ Chapter 2 verses 4 through 9 show the foresight that Nehemiah uh, uh, that Nehemiah had. Chapter 2 verses 4 through 9. Uh, you see, when uh, he mentioned to the king what the need was, he made a request listing what he needed. I think that there are two things that you can do in the world. Sometimes we have the opportunity to present a project or a need, but we are not prepared and we waste the opportunity. We need to have foresight, which means we need to look ahead and plan ahead. So let's look at uh, chapter 2, verses 4 through 9. Then the king said to me, what do you request? So I pray to the God of heaven, and I said, say to the king, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tombs, that I may rebuild it. Then the, uh, I'm sorry, um, then the king said to me, the queen also said beside him, how long will your journey be and when will you return? So I pleased the king to send me and I set him a time. It was approximately 1,500 kilometers, which would have been about a 30-day journey. So he came prepared and he told the king. But notice the next verses because this is very important. He says, furthermore, I said to the king, if it pleases the king, let letters be given to me for the governors of the region beyond the river. <laughs> So he knew there could be difficulties going through different regions. So he wanted letters from the king the, the, so that he would have safe passage on the way to Judah. And a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he must give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel which pertains to the temple, for the city wall, and for the house that I will occupy. Then 
And the king granted them to me according to the good hand of my God upon me. Remember what we said before, that God answers prayer, God uses people. So the king granted him these letters, but Nehemiah was thanking God because it was an answer to his prayer. And verse 9, then I went to the governors in the region beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. So this passage shows us Nehemiah's foresight, looking ahead, what will I need to get the job done? But also, we need to have insight. We need to know how to apply this, uh, uh, the, what we have to the situation on hand. Let's look at chapter 2, verses uh, 12 to 16. So then, okay, uh, verse 12 to 16. Uh, so I came, uh, let's start with verse 11. So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. You know, uh, I think we will stop here. Well, let's just read this passage and then we will continue after the break. Um, then I arose in the night, I and a few men with me, I told no one what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem, nor was there any animal with me except the one on which I rode. Uh, <laughs> Nehemiah wanted to and needed to personally look the situation over so that the information he had was not just third-hand information coming through other people, but he personally would know and understand what needed to be done. Well, we will take a break right now and continue studying these qualities of leadership in Nehemiah. Thank you.